Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish. Tyree. Here's Tyree with the lane. Tyree! Whoa! Can he get there? Tyree at the 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Notre Dame! Woo! 98 Big Woods! How's it going, everyone? I am ND Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together we make up this little show called The Two Irish Brothers show welcome aboard you guys know the deal uh subscribe to this channel you see that green tab in the bottom right hand corner make sure and hit that D like or dislike the video to help with the algorithm and just leave your comments and have some fun and but be nice though be nice we don't like mean people do we ben <laughs> no now first off before we get going uh, i want to give a special shout out to the uh the facebook group that i work with notre dame nation fight of the uh, fight of the irish What's up, guys? Thank you for having me on board. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. That page is growing, so everybody make sure to go check it out. We do not allow negativity on there, which makes it even better. And also, in this video, guys, our good friend and colleague, Lisa Kelly, was supposed to be joined with us. And without going into too much detail, she has a, a little family emergency that, that she's uh, dealing with at the moment. So, Lisa, if you're watching... Um, our prayers are with you and your family, and we hope things go extremely well with that and that there's no further issues. So we just want you to know we're thinking of you. Yep. So with that said, Ben, um, we've got some big Notre Dame news to discuss, and I know Ryan and I covered it on this recent edition of uh, the Fighting Irish Power Hour, but I want to get your thoughts on two different things here. First off, it's beneficial, and we all of us – all of us know this. It's it's become official. Tommy Reese has decided to leave Notre Dame for Alabama to take the same position as offensive coordinator there. Now, I myself have given my thoughts. Ryan's given his thoughts. What are your thoughts? I want to hear this. I am not. Okay. I'm going to start off like this. I am glad that of everything that Tommy Reese has done for Notre Dame. Obviously, he played here. You know, he has given a lot to this program. He has given a lot to the university, and I get that. Um, and I have never legitimately hated Tommy Reese. Okay, I do, I do like him. I have been very critical of Tommy Reese, and I will admit that. Um, I think both of us have been critical at times. Oh, of course, I um, agree. But I didn't. I never wanted him to not succeed at Notre Dame not as a player and not as a coach, because if you're not succeeding at Notre Dame, then Notre Dame is not succeeding as a whole. So there's that. I am sad to see him leave the Notre Dame family because I am sad to see people leave the Notre Dame family. And that's what it is. We are a family. I wish him very, very well at Alabama. It hurts seeing people go to, a quote unquote rival school that is a powerhouse that is Alabama. But I am not totally heartbroken that he is leaving. I think there have been times where he has shown his vulnerability and he has shown that sometimes he can't get the job done. That's a criticism and that's me being critical. Does that mean that I want him to fail? No, that does not. Um, so I'm interested to see how he does at Alabama and I wish him very much, uh, well at Alabama. With that being said, it is now time to move forward. Obviously he's gone. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing Freeman can do. He's made up his mind. He's signed a contract and he's gone. Yep. So it is time to take the next step. And the next step is finding an offensive coordinator. Now, clearly me and you are not in the hiring process, nor I would say we are qualified, if you will, to make that kind of decision. But I'm excited to see who is the next offensive coordinator at the University of Notre Dame. With that said, I will say it one last time. I wish him nothing but the best. And I hope he succeeds at Alabama. And I hope it is everything that he wants it to be. Because I will never wish someone ill will like that. 
And that's fair. That's very fair because, and you know, the only thing that I would worry about though, and I'm sure a lot of people, people have been thinking about this is with Tommy Reese gone and the guys that he's helped recruit, like people are worried about CJ Carr, for example, I can understand that sentiment, but honestly, in my opinion, I'd like to think that players are more committed to the program than they are to one assistant coach. Yes. I think that's fair. I think that's fair and true. I think that it's not like Freeman is leaving and his staff is completely changing and these kids are back to, I guess, square one, if you will. Right. Freeman leaving would be a lot more, I guess, alarming. Yes. If you will. Um, with these recruits. So I don't think that it's a make or break that he leaves and these recruits are now all of a sudden like, why did he leave? I'm not worried about that. Um, so no, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, if a recruit that him and Freeman recruited leaves, I don't think it's because of Tommy Reese. I think there are other factors playing time, um, you know, situational stuff, you know, with family or, you know, location, I think is different. So yeah, that's what I would think. I don't think it would be because of Tommy Reese if it happens. Now myself, I've read some articles like everybody else has, and there's always that who's going to be the next offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Now, I'm not even going to give out names. I'm I'm not even going to speculate on who Marcus Freeman might have on his list. But the big question is this. Do, does Notre Dame go stay in-house for the next offensive coordinator, or do you think they branch out and bring in somebody from the outside? I'm kind of torn between that. I think they branch out. And that's, and that's kind of, I'm myself, I'm kind of hoping that's what they do because you and I talked about this once before about, and this kind of, this kind of relates to Tommy Reese as well. And actually I think this is what brought the the conversation up. Don't feel obligated to hire somebody just, just because they're a Notre Dame guy or because they're a friend of of the, of the program or whatever. Don't branch out and bring in some fresh blood. Yeah. Well, and I'll take it a step further. Maybe not fresh blood, but you know what I mean. New faces. Hire the person that you think is the most qualified for the job and will give you the best chance of winning football games, whether it's in-house or out of house. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's that's the bottom line here. The bottom line is that we are trying to win a national title here at Notre Dame. Okay? It's been a minute since we've done it. We hear the complaints. We hear – the negativity we hear, you know, the the hate that we get being Notre Dame fans. You know, when's Notre Dame going to win a meaningful game? When when's Notre Dame going to be in a title and actually be competitive? When's Notre Dame going to win that title? Okay, so it needs to be who can give us that edge. Yes. Yeah, and there's some name there's some names out there that oh. can do that, but. Like I said, I'm not even going to begin to speculate who Marcus Freeman has on his radar. Um, that would take at least a two-hour video, man. <laughs> not more. Yeah. In some and what, more resources that we don't even have. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and, one, and one thing I wanted to ask you to, to, wrap, <laughs> to wrap up this topic, What did you see the uh, remarks that uh, Hall of Famer uh, uh, Tim Brown made about, uh, about Tommy Reese? No, I did not. This is what he had to say in a couple of tweets. This is a great day for Irish football and maybe even a better day for Tommy Reese. I've been around a lot of offenses, but the Irish offense last year, with maybe the exception of the North Carolina game, was extremely predictable. Seeing the offense struggle told me at least two things. One, Tommy was very dependent on Kelly, and more important, he didn't have the ability to dissect a defense. What we saw is what I call hero ball. You have a player, and mayor in uh, in quotes there, who is better than the person covering, and you throw him the ball a zillion times. Make him the hero. If that doesn't work, you lose. I was at a couple of games where it took everything in me not to go knock on the booth window and say, give me the call sheet, LOL. I truly wish him well. He's going to need it. Let's go Irish. Thoughts? Woof. I mean, Tim Tim Brown, I mean, our, our last yeah. Heisman Trophy winner okay. at Notre Dame, he didn't hold back. Now, I think two things. People like him deserve to say things like that. I will just start with that. Because, I mean, 
is it isn't it obvious? You know, well, he, he's been he's, winner we had. He's last, been around it. Last guy to help us win a title. You know, he's been there, done that, seen what needs to happen. You know, so is he right or wrong? I don't know. I don't know because a, I'm not qualified, and B, I've never been there. I've never been there. I mean, I, 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 I can't. I, but I think that he deserves to be the person that can say things like that. Yeah. Without he, catching flack, let me say that without catching flack from people, because if people take exception to that, okay, what have you done for Notre Dame? You know. Well, exactly. It's like okay, on one side, let me get in the camera. One side, you got Tim Brown former Heisman Trophy winner, last national championship. That's when that all happened. Right. He's been he's been in within right. this program playing on the team. And then number two, you got Joe Schmo talking on, on a Facebook group or message board somewhere. Like who's, us. Well, we're being fair. Yes, I know. I just say, like, yes. People that are on the same level, yes. I guess I should say, as us. The yeah. uh, the armchair quarterbacks is what I'm talking about. They think they know everything. Yes. Uh, who has more room to talk? I would say, without question, Tim Brown has yes. more room to talk than Joe Schmo uh, sitting on his on his recliner watching the game. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway, I thought that was interesting that uh, Tim Brown had that to say. Also, other big news out of Notre Dame, Ben. Um, Notre Dame lands uh, defensive back commit Leonard Moore. And uh, Ryan and I were talking about this. I saw some of the kids' highlights. He's not Deion Sanders, but this kid's pretty good. And yeah. I think he's going to really help out our backfield. Yeah, solid pickup. I mean, and a, a lot of people really, really put stock in rankings and 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 put stock in these, you know, four-star, five-star, three-star, one-star, whoever. Guys, Okay. They are better now, and I will give them credit, okay? Florida State is way better now, and they are definitely on the rise, and they definitely look like a program that's going to make a lot of noise in in years to come. But you have to remember that the last couple really down years that Florida State had, they had a top 15 recruiting class all those years. It doesn't mean jack. If you're a five-star or a one-star, it matters a lot of who you're playing with and who's coaching you. So the fact that we get a three-star as opposed to a five-star like maybe Alabama or Ohio State or Georgia doesn't make me alarmed, doesn't upset me, doesn't make me mad. None of that. It's okay. You know, we got a three-star guy that looks like he has a lot of potential and he looks like he's going to be a phenomenal athlete. Let's go. I so, agree. I like this pickup. I like this. He's all in. You know, um, like you said, he's not Deion Sanders, but he's going to improve this backfield that we have. And the point is that these kids getting better. Well, know? it's like I've, it's like I've said a million times. Okay, yeah, five star. The, the, I'm not saying that the star system doesn't matter. Of course, it does. Right. It says it says it a lot about matter to a percentage. Yes. It yeah, but the but thing is. Just because you get a guy that's a three star doesn't mean that he can't become a five star player. Level, yeah. The difference yeah, exactly. between a three star and a five star is a five star is ready to go right as he walks in the door. The three star still has some work, but the three star can become the five star later on down the road. Look at Ben. Look at Benjamin Morris in this season. Yeah, he got significant playing time right away as a three star, and what a season he had! Yeah. Six picks, and I mean, he still has some work to do, but. The sky, the the it, the ceiling is only up from here with him. So the point the point I'm making at is don't be disappointed if you get a bunch of three <coughs> guys. Yeah, and I'm not saying the four and five stars aren't hungry, but these are the three that these three stars are the ones that are the most hungry because they have something to prove. They want to prove that prove everybody wrong that they are the same uh, caliber of player th- that those four and five stars are. Yeah. So all I know is it was a real nice real nice pickup getting Leonard Moore. And he should he should really benefit this uh, this program a lot. But also, Ben, in other football related news, that's not Notre Dame, and this one is exciting for both of us, mm-hmm. mainly because I myself I don't, I don't know how much you've seen it, but I've already been watching the indoor football league already. But 
The Arena Football League just announced that it is coming back. Yep. I think it's going to start in 2024. 2024, they will have 16 teams. 16 teams, unnamed cities at this point, but the announcement is official. The AFL is coming back, and I remember at one point, the AFL, everybody was on top of that. Everybody was following that. They were loving it, and we all know a couple of stories out of um, out of the original AFL, um, the big one being Kurt Warner having played for the Iowa Barnstormers. That ended up getting leading him into the in, into his NFL career. You know, going from stock and shelves at a high B uh, to the arena to the Iowa Barnstormers, and then to the um, did the alien just show up or was that Predator? <laughs> I heard that little noise. Anyway, I digress. And then, of course, the the other big st- big ones were, uh, you know, the Arizona Rattlers <laughs> being the you know the the face team of the of the league for a long time, and um, so, and I remember too back growing up the when the uh, Arena Football Two League started, you know, there was a team here here in the Quad Cities that uh, and they just recently came back in the last couple of years, the uh, Quad City Steam Wheelers. So the bottom line is what I'm getting at is that was a lot of fun to watch arena football, very uh, high scoring, very quick, very fast. And it was, uh, it was, uh, had a very strong following at one point. Yes, it did. And it's just, it's just, it's just a sad thing that it went bankrupt the first time around and you know, yeah, but, but what, but one thing I would like to know, Right now in the in the indoor football league, which is the biggest the biggest uh, indoor league in the country, there's uh, two clubs. Those two clubs that I just mentioned, the Arizona Rattlers and the Iowa Barnstormers. Could you see the AFL poaching those two teams from IFL? I could see maybe one, which would be the Rattlers, but not the Barnstormers, because it has been a very long time since the Barnstormers were in the Arena leagues. Yeah, that's true. They they've kind of bounced around from a couple different leagues, wow. and when they when they originally folded, they well they didn't fold, but they got moved to to New York, and they became I forget who, but then they were brought back again when they when a couple other leagues started up, and yeah. So I know that there there was an article that that said uh, I think it was the Des Moines Register that said uh, the Barnstormers they're happy being in the IFL, they want to stay there, but. You know, myself personally, I take newspaper articles with a grain of salt because let's face it, dude, money talks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're backed by a decent brand. You know, Fox Sports One having this, this, uh, the money pot, I guess is the right word to say. That's a good brand, man. That's not like some upstart one that's kind of trying to make a name for itself. This is, they got legit money coming in. So it's going to be exciting. But you know what's more exciting? What's that? The XFL. Oh yes, yes. Uh, two weekends from now, get ready for Battle Hawks. Yep, that's both. That's our team. That's our team from the yep. XFL. Uh, that gets started up for the first time in three years. And you know, it's as I've said before, Ben. It's very unfortunate because, and I don't mean this in the way that I, that I say it. When the XFL first came back in 2020, that league was doing really well. It was doing well, and COVID I mean, stopped it. Yeah, I mean, granted, yes. The week one, they had like uh, three million viewers for the first weekend, and then they then they dropped off to a million and a half. But those kind of drops aren't uncommon, right? So, I mean, they were still no. getting a million and a half viewers per. No, week. and the and yeah, and the reason they shut down was not a money thing. It was a it's, it yeah. was a situational thing with COVID, where cities like Los Angeles and stuff just completely shut down. I mean, they they closed the doors to businesses and stuff, not just you know, the XFL. So, yeah. So I hate it. I hate it when they call that a failure because it wasn't a failure. It was, that was a very unique situation with COVID and all that. And if they were on a non COVID year, I think that they would have gone far. So the fact that they're back is exciting. The fact that, um, you know, tickets are already selling out for certain teams. Battle Hawks are one of the big names. Mainly Um, because Seattle or Seattle, St. Louis, because St. Louis, um, doesn't have a team. A big market. How do you not have a pro team in that yeah. in that city? Coming oh, like before um, us. Yep, they're missing two pro teams right now, and that's football and basketball because they have a soccer team that's getting ready to start. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. I can't wait for the Battle Hawks to come back. I can't wait for 
XFL in general to come back. You know, we have some changes. We have some new teams in the league. Some cities have changed hands a little bit. And, yep, the uh, San, the San Anto- there's the San Antonio Brahmas, which, of course, with The Rock and his ex-wife leading the uh, the league. Um, you know, of course, you, you knew the Brahmas were going to – that's not that's not shocking. But real, other than that, all the team names are the same. It's just like the Renegades, they go by the Arlington Renegades instead of the Dallas Renegades. You have yeah. the uh, the well, Dragons. The team names are the same, yeah. but some of the cities have changed. And, and the Dragon, the, the, the Seattle Dragons – Or now the they're, they're, Yeah, they're now the Sea Dragons, and they play in Orlando. Now. But, yeah, the city changes are uh, San Antonio and uh, Orlando. Orlando Guardians are now there, and they came from New York. Yes, and then uh, I think there was one other one, too. And then uh, Vegas has the Vipers, who were yes. originally in Tampa Bay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the so color I- scheme changed for the Vipers, because the Vipers were originally green and yellow, and now they're going to be black and red. And then same with the Guardians. The Guardians were like a pewter gray and black, and now they're uh, a green and uh, gray. Yep. No. So. And then after this, and come April, and this is probably—I I hate the saying USFL coming back. Yes, I the USFL, and they're going to overlap by two weeks, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I got to be honest with you, I like the USFL just a tad bit better, just a tad bit. Yeah. Because I, I, I like the direction that they're going. That's why. Yeah. They're doing it smart, and I'm not saying nothing against the XFL, but it's just USFL. That to, to me, I'm all about patriotism, and that name, of course, reeks of patriotism. Yeah, and also Ben, don't forget you still owe me. I owe you some bets. I know. Yes, one dress up, do a show dressed as Papa Smurf. Two, you get waxed either at the salon or by me with duct tape. And then the third one I thought of, but I'm going to save that as a surprise. Yeah, yeah, I think the Papa Smurf one will come back. Will be done while we have uh, the USFL going. I think that would be a good a good idea. Okay, so that's kind of why I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the next season to come along, so I do one of those videos as as Papa Smurf. Okay, so, and then uh, well, and then if uh, uh the waxing, whether it's done by me or the salon, I got to be there just to film it, of course. So. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, with that said, everyone, that's all we have for you in this video. Um, you know, again, to our friend Lisa, I hope hope you're holding up well, and I hope things are going well with the situation. And uh, yeah. So Ben, anything else you want to add? Just that. I want the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Fly, Eagles, fly on the road to Super Bowl victory, too. Um, no, I'm not changed teams. No, I'm not, like, pledging my loyalty to the Eagles. No, I'm not bandwagoning. You just, I want to see, just I want to see them win. We got a couple Notre Dame guys on the Eagles. Um, that, oh, that's true. That's true. The city did save my life when I was younger. So I will I will give them some, some uh, props, if you will. So that's, that's why I got an Eagles hat on. No, I'm still all in on my Dolphins, and next year might be our year. So that's fair. That's very fair. So on that note, everyone, I am in Deshaun 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And as always, good night, God bless, and go Irish. Go Irish. <laughs>